Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis, where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Some of the world's best small arms have been designed by military personnel. The legendary AK-47 was designed by a tank commander, General Mikhail Kalashnikov, during World War II. Israel's iconic Uzi submachine gun was designed by Major Ozil Gal in the late 1940s. In the lines of the same, an Indian Lieutenant Colonel Prasat Bansot developed a prototype of 9x19mm submachine gun. Lieutenant Colonel first caught the attention of Army Top Brass in 2019 when he reverse engineered an INSAS rifle to produce a bullpup carbine variant, with a shorter barrel. This simple solution seemed to have eluded the original INSAS designers. The Indian Army currently operates a wide variety of submachine guns. Typical for a submachine gun, its main application is for close quarters combat, where it can be used by heavy weapon detachments, tank and aircraft crews, drivers, and radio or radar operators. The modern submachine carbine is often considered as a secondary arm. If you look at the arsenal of the Indian Army today they operate five different types of submachine guns firing the same caliber which are SAF Carbine 2, A1, Sterling, HK MP5, Micro Uzi and B and T MP9. Majority of these weapons are World War II era submachine guns and are costly as well to import. The ism -E is an Indian prototype 9x19mm submachine gun designed and developed in 2020 by Armament Research and Development Establishment ARDE, and Lt. Col. Prasap Bansot. The prototype could replace World War II era submachine guns and could find countrywide use. The gun is capable of firing 9x19mm per bayam, a cartridge already in use in the Indian Army, giving it a major logistical advantage. Similar to the Uzi, the ism -E is a straight blowback submachine gun with a side folding stock, a relatively low rate of fire, and its magazine is loaded inside of the pistol grip. The ism -E has an 8-inch barrel, and a weight of around 2 kg when unloaded, and 3 kg loaded. A smaller, subcompact version of the weapon weighing less than 1.5 kg is in development. For your reference, an empty AK-47 type rifle weighs around 3.4 kg. The upper receiver is made from aluminium, and the lower receiver is made from carbon fiber. The upper receiver has a full-length Picatinny rail, and there are emlock slots on the left and right side of the weapon. The prototype weapon was produced in just four months, in collaboration with the DRDO's Pune-based Armament Research and Development Establishment ARDE. This itself is a big achievement. The weapon was tested by firing over 300 rounds each. The weapon operates on a simple blowback principle, has a 33-round high-capacity magazine, a range of 100 meters and a rate of fire of 600 rounds per minute. It has an 8-inch barrel and an upper made of aircraft aluminium and a lower made of carbon fiber. The Indian Army is to file a patent for the weapon and is looking for a production partner to mass produce the weapon, recently displayed at an exhibition of indigenous innovations at the Delhi Cantonment. ARD is looking for private partners to manufacture a limited number of guns so that they can be used in testing. The current order will be of 25 guns and these guns will be sent for user trials, where they will be tested extensively before the weapon enters mass production. The ism -E will not replace primary assault rifles like the AK-47 and the INSAS which are in frontline service and fire high-velocity ammunition. It is designed for use as a second-line personal weapon for tank and aircraft crews and in close combat situations like counter-terrorist operations and room interventions, in confined spaces like warships and merchant vessels and by VIP protection forces. Because it fires a subsonic 9x19 round, it could potentially find a huge market with the central police organizations, state police forces as well as exports. 
with a likely production cost of between us 40,000 and 50,000 a weapon it is just one third the cost of imported submachine guns like the MP5. The key challenge for the ISM E will begin when the weapon enters mass production. This is where, the issues like consistency of production, quality control and manufacturing processes will come into play. The INSAS which was an excellent design but dogged by quality control issues throughout its service career. The Kalashnikov was successful during World War II as it was backed by the resources of the Soviet state which put it into mass production and stabilized the design. India will also have to follow the similar footsteps to promote and boost the indigenously developed weapons to become self-reliant in defense sector. This was today's update. Please let us know your views and opinion regarding the same. Feel free to comment on any topic on which you want to hear from us. Please do like and subscribe our channel and we will be soon back with more amazing development in the defense sector.